Hello world, my name is Victor Engelmann and in this video I will explain how computers work or more precisely how mainboards work. I've already made a video about processors where I explained the processor that Ben Eater built in his video series and yeah he also has a video series about computers uh, based on a 6502 processor that's a, a very um, old processor but uh, and, and a very simple processor but uh, yeah it's still a quite common processor it was used in all sorts of things like uh, like in Tamagotchis and uh, Nintendo um, game consoles and uh, the C64 and all sorts of I think the Apple II also also Bender from Futurama uh, has a 6501 processor I think so yeah let's start um, the first thing that you need is a CPU a processor and uh, as I said uh, Benita uses a 6502 processor and if you've seen the video about the processor that he built um, we had this uh, this bus in there right so was a, an 8-bit CPU so so he had a bus with eight wires okay and um, yeah so he so the processor that he built uh, used this bus to send data from one component to the other and only one component was supposed to write to the bus at the same time and uh, stuff like that and um, and yeah this bus is also connected to the external pins of the CPU so um, and uh, this is actually something um, when you watch videos uh, by Adrian's Digital Basement for example or the 8-bit guy when they repair old C64 computers um, yeah, you can really see uh, this bus going from left to right over the over the main board. But here we also have a second bus. Okay, so this is uh, the so-called data bus, and you have another bus. Uh, yeah, in his video series, uh, this second bus has sixteen bits. So uh, I'm not gonna draw sixteen wires here. So. I just say 16 wires and this is an address bus. Now if you remember that video about processors, um, that processor had some built-in RAM, okay? And it accessed that RAM uh, basically by writing an address through the data bus into a register and we could call that an address register and that register would always output its content to um, to a memory chip and uh, yeah then the memory chip could be uh, instructed to output the um, the data from the address that's coming in from uh, this address register now this connection between the uh, address register and the memory chip uh, was basically the same thing as this address bus okay now I don't know if the 6502 uh, also works like that, whether it has a register for the address uh, that gets written before it uh, tries to read something, but um, that's really not important for us here right now. Um, the important thing now is that the CPU has two extra pins, a read pin and a write pin. and um, yeah, now what, what the CPU can now do is it can output an address and say I want to read. Okay, so if it outputs an address and puts voltage on the read pin, then it means, hey, I want to read uh, from uh, address whatever, 42 for, for example, and then, um, it, yeah, the, then the main board has to uh, provide something at address 42 okay so the, uh, you might have uh, something like a ps2 connector here um, uh, 
for for a keyboard or a mouse. Um, you could have a COM port. Okay, and uh, yeah, the crucial thing now is that uh, all of these components need to have something. Um, need to have some way to know hey, which is my address okay because uh, when the CPU puts an address here on this address bus then this basically goes to all devices at once and now every device needs to know hey I'm device 2, I'm device 3, I, I'm device whatever so that they don't uh, do something when uh, I actually want to talk to a different device, okay? Because, uh, yeah, for example, I might um, tell the COM1 port, hey, I want to read, okay? If, uh, if I put 42 out here and I say the COM port is uh, device 42, then, and then if I do that, then uh, COM port 2 at address 43 or whatever is not supposed to give me an answer because otherwise the answers from the different components would collide okay so yeah if I say uh, read 42 then the COM1 port should um, should output its data to the uh, data port so that the CPU can then take that data and uh, do whatever with it like store it in a in a register or uh, whatever. The other pin here is the write pin and um, yeah that basically does the opposite. So um, with the read pin I give uh, an address to the main board and then I want to get data from that device back through the uh, data bus and uh, yeah with the write pin uh, it does the opposite. So um, so I set an address and write and I also set the data then and then uh, it means that device number 42 is supposed to take that data and uh, do whatever with it. So, um, so com, the COM port might uh, put electricity on the, on the different serial pins uh, on the COM port, for example. And this is how you then can communicate with external devices, right? You can put a 42 in here and then uh, just put data here, write, data, write, data, write. And then uh, you send that data out to this external device, for example, um, but whatever. Now, uh, this is basically already the, the main function of, uh, uh, of a main board, but uh, now like this, this machine wouldn't do very much because uh, you turn the machine on, the CPU just doesn't know what to do and wouldn't really even start doing anything. So, so yeah, we need to give some information to the CPU about what we want it to do, okay? And um, yeah, Ben Ita does it like this. He puts a ROM chip in here read-only memory, which is similar to RAM uh, in that you can uh, you can put an address in here and then then it will uh, output its uh, content at that address. Um, and a lot of uh, the time in uh, Ben Ita's video series, uh, he spends on uh, pulling the ROM chip out, putting it into a uh, ROM programmer, writing some data there, putting it back in. And uh, yeah, uh, to be more precise, this is electronically erasable programmable read-only memory, EEPROM. Um, and yeah, this um, from chip here now contains the information for the CPU what it uh, what I want it to do okay so when you turn the machine on 
the first thing the CPU does is after some initialization, it will ask for address FFFC and FFFD. And from there, it wants to read its instruction pointer. It gets the information, hey, where do you want to start? Okay. And um, yeah, then you need to uh, return some address here in your uh, ROM, in, uh, yeah, in your ROM chip. And uh, there you then have your instructions, like, I don't know, some move instructions and uh, add instructions and store instructions and whatever. Um, and yeah, then this uh, prom then controls what this whole machine does, okay? And um, uh, the data in here, by the way, is what you call the firmware. I'm guessing you've heard that term before. And yeah, at this point, um, you really just have to, uh, to put the data onto this prom and yeah, put that prom into the machine and then you can start the machine and it will do what you put in here. And uh, yeah, one thing that uh, Ben Ita does with it then is he attaches an LCD display and um, yeah, the code in the prom then tells the CPU to communicate with uh, with this LCD display. And at this point, uh, this isn't very much um, a question of uh, wires and connections anymore. At this point, uh, the prom just needs to uh, to know the communication protocol for the communication with the LCD. Okay, so uh, so it uh, then has to tell the CPU, "Hey, write this uh, exact data to instruct the LCD to uh, put an H here." Then output the data that will make the LCD put an E there, then an L L. O W O R L D, right? And then you have Hello World on your LCD, and uh, <laughs> and that's uh, what Ben Eater calls uh, Hello World from scratch. It is very much from scratch. Um, one of the comments uh, complained, "You didn't mind the or," <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think this is as much from scratch as you uh, can get. Um, I mean, I'm happy that uh, he used a, a stock CPU here for that, because otherwise uh, things might really go crazy if he used his own CPU for that. Um, and yeah, that's basically Ben Eater's uh, 6502 computer. Um, well, the, um, the prom here is uh, uh, at this point really sets every character manually, uh, which is a bit yeah, not ideal. And then he, uh, then Ben Eater says, okay, I want to use the commands uh, call and return for function calls. And um, yeah, at, this, at that point, everything breaks apart again because um, call and return use the stack and like this, the machine doesn't have a stack. So, so what he then does is uh, he puts a RAM chip in here. So when he has some RAM in there, uh, now he can use call and return, but um, one thing that's important at this point is that uh, at the start of your program in the EE prom, uh, you have to set the stack pointer to something uh, inside this uh, address range of the 
uh, of the RAM. Um, but yeah, that's that's a minor detail. And yeah, that's basically Ben Eater's mainboard 6502 computer. Um, I mean, it's a good thing he used a stock uh, 6502 processor for this and uh, didn't put and, and didn't build this on top of his own processor because that would have become quite mad, I think. Um, but yeah, this is pretty cool. Um, uh, one thing I want to mention is that, um, yeah, you don't solder the RAM chips directly into the mainboard. I mean, people used to do that uh, in the 80s, I think it was still common, but um, yeah, that caused too many problems. So, um, so the next thing that you would do, and uh, you see that, for example, in these repair videos uh, for C64 computers, uh, in Adrian's Digital Basement or the 8-Bit Guy, or I think there are also others. Um, so you don't solder the RAM uh, directly into there, you, uh, you solder a socket in there. And then you can take the, uh, the RAM chip, just push it in the socket, pull it out of the socket, and uh, you don't have to solder it in. Um, but if you pull out chips often and put them back in, pull out, put back in, um, it can damage the chip, the legs of the chip, and that's also bad. So um, the next thing that you might see are so-called uh, zero insertion force uh, sockets, which have a little lever here, and you open that lever, and then you can just uh, take it out and it's without any resistance. <laughs> And you can uh, put it back in without any resistance, then flip the lever again and uh, it's then firmly seated. I remember my first computer, an Intel Pentium 1 with uh, 133 megahertz, uh, had such a socket for the processor. Okay, but uh, yeah, for the RAM, uh, this is not what we use, uh, what we do these days. Uh, these days we um, we have these uh, DDR sockets where you have the connections going uh, to little connectors. Okay, and then you put the the RAM chip on a separate little board with the corresponding connectors, and then you push that into the socket and uh, close these little white clips on the side, <laughs> and uh, then you are connected to the uh, to the buses. But uh, yeah, okay, that's just a detail that I wanted to mention. Another thing that I want to mention is, um, in reality, you wouldn't uh, communicate directly from the CPU to the um, to the serial ports here. Because yeah, serial communication is very sensitive to timings. So uh, if you send a byte out to a device and then start doing some calculations, and the calculations take too long, then the next byte might be uh, not there quick enough. Okay, and uh, or maybe uh, you didn't do enough calculations, and the next byte goes out too early. Uh, that can really screw up the communication with the external device. So uh, because of that, you would uh, put some uh, serial controller in between here. So you would talk to the serial controller and tell it, hey, I want you to send this data. And then the serial controller would take care of all the timings and you can do your calculations uh, in between. And, uh, and then it's not your problem whether these timings are OK here. Um, so. Yeah, that's Ben Eater's 6502 computer. Yeah, if you like this video, like it, share it, subscribe. Actually, if you like this video, go to Ben Eater's channel, watch his videos, uh, share his videos, subscribe to his channel, and also buy his construction kits for all these things, okay? So uh, yeah, see you next time.